You're gonna remove one card from their board and their hand. That's another rough roll. So this, is, this is a pure Gabriel build, I guess. And we're gonna use the Kuroko to remove the two units from the Fuki and the Tamahagami. So, look at that. Hey yo, how's it going everyone? Entropy here today with another video. Today, we're going to be doing another deck profile. This time, another deck clan that got supported from the Fighters Collection, and that is Nubatama. Definitely not Mark. This is Ninja Master M. I quite like this deck. Uh, overall, the clan's approach is quite interesting. Hand destruction has always been great. Uh, in you know certain formats and certain card games like Yu-Gi-Oh, it is literally the end-all be-all. If your opponent can draw cards, if their opponent has no cards, they can't play the game, and by default, you should be winning, right? So, without further ado, let's talk about Nubitama. This is one of the variants right before we transition to Shiranui, which is a little very big difference in the playstyle. So I can't wait to um, to showcase this as an end of an era for Nubitama for now. So first of all, there aren't really a lot of changes. We're still playing Kuroko, which lets us Soul Blast 2 to remove two cards from our opponent's bind zone. And we have many ways to put cards onto our opponent's bind zone. For example, Fuki, which kind of is one, puts into your soul to bind to one card from your opponent's hand. And cards like Tamahagane, which binds card from your opponent's board. So there you go. We play other weird ones like Dreadmaster which helps us Karmas 2 for the opponent to discard one on their beginning of the next turn. Um, it's not amazing, but Tama doesn't really have an amazing grade 1 lineup. Honestly, overall, it doesn't have a lot of support. So Dreadmaster is just here. Hopefully down the line we get better units, but right now it is what we have, and it's fine. Karmas 2 for a minus 1 on our opponent's end is, is solid. We have 4 PGs, countercharging. You see how much counterblast we use. Even with just the grade 1 lineup, you will know that the counterblast Counter charging is very helpful, and we play for the stride fodders just because we do get two very solid strides. Um, three if you include the Grey Elemental, so the stride fodder is there and very helpful. Next for the Grey 2 lineup, Tamahagane is definitely a 4 of, you can't avoid it, it just helps you remove something for free without counter blast. And if you want to like, really, really remove it, you have the starter or other means as well. You have a Mate in the form of this Shura Self Dragon, which helps you search for the right grade 3 that you want. This is helpful before because you do want a Persona Blast. Right now, the other, the triple rare grade 3 Legion got buffed. So it's not so important, but it does help you cycle through the deck, I guess. And um, you do get to remove something for your opponent's bind zone and become an 11k beater, so there's that. We play four of the Darani Congo. This is very important actually because it is an 11k beater when you're in Legion. And when it hits, you can still blast one to remove two cards from Hone's Bind Zone if you're a Vanguard's in Legion. So it's basically a better version of the starter if you're in Legion. And lastly, we play one of the 9 plus 3s per each card that's binded. So it does synergize well with Tamahagane and it does synergize well with the Fuki. So there's that. Helps you scale up a little bit. Doesn't really come up too often, but when you're low on cards, then the numbers could matter. Next, for the main ride target, we're going to ride the Kurijiri Kongo. This is your break ride, plus 10. At the, at, you bind one thing, and then at the beginning of their turn, they discard one. And if your opponent has three or less cards, he gets plus 3k, so it's a 14k beater. This card is pretty good, because it does synergize well with, with Stride. You know, obviously, when you Stride on top of this, it won't activate the break ride skill, but we can break ride, force the bind, and then you can Stride on top of that. You don't have the plus 10k, but you still have that minus one on your opponent's end. So, when you're going for lethal, it is very helpful. Next, we play four of the Hokage Gongo. This is your second ride target, or your break ride target. This legions with both of the two mates you have, and when you legion, you bind one thing, and you choose one card from your opponent's um, hand at random, and bind it as well. So, this does synergize as well with the units that remove them from the bind zone. And you can still blast one to get plus 2k, for uh, if you have another unit in the middle column to help you legion early if you need to. And we play one of the Mandara Congo. This used to be at four, but right now we play it at one only, simply because it is not as value. Um, the triple rare got buffed to actually remove something on the board, so this is less less important. Or remove something from the hand. I forgot which one. Four heal guards because why don't you play four heal guards? Next we play one of the Harmonics because why not? We play two of the Madu because this is our Lord and Savior. Um, when we're in Legion, you basically get to discard a grade three to add a grade three from a hand. You get to choose which one, which means that you can re Legion if you discard a, a Strive Fodder or you discard like a Break Ride. So it's very nice and it helps you fix your ride if you need that. For your first Strive target, generally gonna be the Geratsurakan. <laughs> Sorry. 
Um, but when you hit, you can count last one to have your opponent discard a card from a hand, so it's basically a better version of Dreadmaster, which is quite nice, and two of the Joru Hiraken. Okay, so when this attacks of anger, Karamas 1, so uh, Soul Blast 1, Karamas 2, choose one of your opponent's regards, bind it. And if your opponent has three or more cards, you can choose one from random and bind it. If your heart is a sure self dragon, you put those cards into the drop zone instead. So this is really nice because, well, all your grade 3s right now are sure self dragons. And um, it's just it's just a quick and easy skill. One of the negatives of this card is that it only activates when you attack a Vanguard, which means you cannot bind front row intercepts. Uh, which does suck, but Tamahagane helps you deal with that, so you're good on that department. So overall, Nubitama is quite interesting. Uh, if your opponent doesn't expect these kind of plays and kind of doesn't really care what you're doing, uh, you can catch them off guard and um, you can definitely get them into a little trouble. You know, whether that's like a few combo decks like Messiahs that really want their pieces, just a few binds here and there could definitely, definitely be a pain in the ass. So. Without further ado, let's go into a game or two and see how this deck performs on the ladder. Now, I think that this is more of a fun deck, frankly. Uh, it's really hard to be competitive with this deck because it doesn't really get too much support right now. And, and the deck doesn't really plus, like the deck doesn't really draw at all. You can remove your opponent's cards, but you, you don't really draw in a sense, other than Madu, which which can be a little bit of a trouble, especially when all the decks can really draw into their pieces and do all the shenanigans right now. Like, you're still relying on a little bit of sacking and top decking to get your get your little combos, like Fuki into Tamahagane into the starter, Kuroko into the Soul Blast 2, remove 2. So, overall, like, I don't think the deck can compete at that high level yet, but it has the pieces where if you just get a little bit of support, if you can just plus a little bit more, um, I think it could definitely be quite the dark horse in the metagame. So before we go into game one, I'd like to thank our members of the channel, uh, Kamui, Nova Grappler, 2 Mellow, Casey, and ZBD. Appreciate it so much for supporting the channel. And if you like the video so far, like the video and subscribe if you haven't already and want to see more. So I'm trying to keep the explanation part a bit shorter and try to go to the game as soon as possible. Let me know if you prefer a little bit more in-depth explanation and I'll try to do that as well. But here we go, game one against Gear Chronicles. Very nice sleeve, remember to use your playmats. I, I think I'm a bit too late already, but yeah, let's try to hit that target. Going first, of course, we get that one draw right now, so it definitely helps, especially when we don't really plus, as we just mentioned. In terms of the right targets, start off with Kuroko, generally put it behind the Vanguard Circle with the grade one. I like to ride the Strife Order or the Dreadmaster. The Grade 2, I like to ride the Common Mate or the Scaler. And the Grade 3 is the Break Ride or the Legion, depending on the matchup. So here, we only have the Strife Order, so we're just gonna ride that. And we're just gonna pass. Unfortunately, the Strife Order doesn't help us give us that Grade 3 consistency, like it does with most other decks at this point, because they did get their G era support. Uh, Nubitama. Probably a little bit later down the line. I'll probably need to wait for a little bit more, a very bit more. But uh, I promise you, it's probably going to be worth the wait. Shiranui is quite the menace. Uh, I don't know if it will translate well into zero because you're using your opponent's units to beat themselves up. Uh, why are you hitting themselves? Why are you hitting yourself? Uh, and what that means is your opponent's defense would be scaling, it would be at 16, 21 before your units are attacking. So it would be interesting, but we will see how it works. Using the Stride Fodder, helping them search the Chrono Jet. When they don't play the Great Free Searcher, they are a little bit more reliant on this. So that does get a little bit annoying. But I've been testing with the with the Resist Starter as well. And the Legion here, Ruin Disposal Dragon, is still really solid. But uh, there is a new double rare that helps you get more consistently onto your Chrono Jet, which is preferred and is the more popular option these days. But it, it is still something that you can test and play around with. Alright, let's take that one damage. That's PG, that's unfortunate. But luckily, we do have one PG here. Uh, we do want to draw into a Halo Guard, hopefully. Because Chrono Chip does have the Guard Trick. And that could be a pain in the ass. So, actually, Tamahagane here isn't pretty... Isn't, isn't bad, because we do have the combo. Surprise, surprise. So let's do this. Let's combo. Get rid of the starter, actually. Let's use this. Fuki. 
Now, what this combo gives us, right, is it gives us two cards in the bind zone. It gives us two cards in the soul, which means the starter will proc. And that is quite fun. Heal is fine. Heal is fine. Ideally, we draw into like a grade three, but heal is fine. They heal, that's fine. But we did get rid of their Chrono Jet, and we did get rid of their starter. So hopefully, they have a way to search for another grade three, because this could be really unfortunate, and we would, we could be both grade stuck. Um, and since we're grade stuck, I, I don't mind that. I really don't mind that. We do need to top that grade three too, and not get grade stuck. And hopefully, we can. But hopefully they get great stuff too, so we can play this little turtle game. Uh, it could be fun, it could be spicy. We do have the PG in the drop zone, which means that we do have that counter charge set up, ready to go. And if we do draw into a Legion, that is one of the great targets that you can put back to the deck. So we could potentially draw into another defensive option. Ryan Faye is going to go into the counter charger. SP, very nice. Quite like this card when I started playing Gears, but right now I think you have better options and uh, GG can't use GG earlier on because they don't have the soul generally if you use the 4k grade 3 searcher you would have the soul to search for grade 3 and then you have two soul to use the GG on turn 2 which the resist starter doesn't give you because it is GB restricted which is kind of unfortunate but calling the GG here um, mainly here to dodge the Fuki maybe which is which is fine I think uh, a little bit more cautious because we did just drop their Chrono Jet that they searched to the drop zone. Um, but it doesn't really help with, the, with setting the numbers, so maybe putting it in the other reverse circle right here would have been better just to set things up. Because, well, next turn is grade 3 and then they stride, they're already a 26k number, they don't really need the 5k boost. Unless, well, they're going to Fate Rider, but if they're going to go into Fate Rider, might as well just put it in the, in the corner, right? So we are going to be great stuck. That is unfortunate, very bad, but uh, we play with the hammer dealt, and that is just how it is sometimes, so we're just going to call some grade 2 as out, so we don't take too much damage, and try to push a little bit, that's a PG, that's nice, that's a heal, unfortunately not going to proc for us, but it is a legion target I guess, if we do see a grade 3, trying to force our opponent to commit, and even if they do multiple damage to us, like if they like Chrono Jet, if they return our intercepts, whatever, um, the more damage checks we, we take, the more likely we will see a draw trigger, which means the more likely we will see a grade 3 or other cards. So I don't actually mind taking the damage maybe, but they are going to be grid stuck as well, so this is this is kind of funny. Um, this, is, this is pretty sad, but I guess that's just how it is. We're going to be, be doing a little mud fight in here. Where we're just going to be stuck on grade 2. Opponents and gears don't really plus before grade 3 and strides. So just walling our opponent out. Oh, they do play this though. The Relic Master. Are they going to remove the starter? Or the grade 2s? Okay, they're just going to go on the aggression. They're just going to try to balance out the damage. Riding the uh, counter charger here is a good play then. Because... Well, if they're going to be great stuff, they, they want a Vanguard that at least do, does something, right? Rather than like a Vanilla, which we have right now, which is a shame. But uh, not that our, our grade 2s have any great Vanguard circle skills anyway, so... Taking the Vanguard first means that they can guarantee that counter charge, even if we see a defensive here, which is good play. Another PG to the damage zone, that's our second one, which is unfortunate. And we're going to be put to 3. Hopefully we see a draw trigger, because we do want to see something. Because we are, again, we don't really plus. We have 8 draw triggers left in the deck, and we are not seeing one here. Come on, grade 3. There's like 8 left. There's 8 left. There we go. That's nice. Grade 3. Alright, we're just going to stride. Going to the Gerat Sudakan. Just stride first. Talk later. We could also Legion, but I feel like just drawing into more stuff, just trying to remove your opponent's uh, board and minusing your opponent. Getting more draft checks here, especially since we have so many triggers left in the deck, uh, probably is the better play right here. And making sure whatever our opponent in, has in our hand, it is going to the drop zone. They only have one card. And there we go, draw trigger here on the third check. There's gonna draw trigger. I guess if they defensive draw, then that one card right there is not going to be guaranteed to drop. 
but it is still a fine play, I think. Just force them to discard, make them struggle, you know, even if they top deck a grade 3, they, ha they might have to discard like a Strive Fodder, which makes their play a lot more awkward. So, it's their stand and draw, let's see what they draw into. Next turn we can always do Legion, we have like, three triggers on the PG, which is perfect. And we also have Striding as well, through this. They're gonna discard the heal. Okay then. They're gonna discard the heal, I think they have, you know, they'd rather just play whatever they have in their hand. Grade 3, fair enough. This is the card that they, they defensive. Because you can see that the card that they drew into, is on the right side, right? So. Um, it was the decision between the Grade 3 and the Heal Lord, and definitely the Grade 3 is better, because you could just Legion anyways. So, a little bit technical difficulty here, but we're back. And, just gonna put the Heal back, that's fine play. I think rather than the Counter Charger, I would put the Resist or the Relic Master back, just because you are a little bit behind. And the Resist does protect the, your, themselves against, like, a Tamahagami or a Hokage Gongo play. So, Definitely a little different here, valuing the counter charge when they had three open counter blast. I think just, yeah, I think maybe just whatever they drew is, uh, is a little awkward. Maybe a defensive, maybe a grade three, they'd rather just save. The on attack though, they do have a counter blast one return, a grade one or below. So unfortunately, our starter is going to go back to the deck. But what can we do? Draw a trigger, gives them 12k number. If they see one more trigger, they could potentially put us to five. And luckily they don't, but that 12 is going to hit our rear guard. And using the Hokage Kongo here to Legion, I don't know how I feel about it. On the, on the positive, we get two heals back to the deck. On the negative, we're not really removing anything from the board. So really need to think about this one. Not too sure myself, honestly. Alright, we have the Fuki. Hmm. Fuki can't proc because our opponent doesn't have three cards. This won't proc because our opponent doesn't have three cards. I think just legioning is the better play right here. Let's just legion. Put the triggers back in. And we're gonna legion the common. The double rare legion legions with the rare mate. So that's something to consider. And overall the, the rare mate is just the better mate to use just because it does do something. Um, without having to set things up. So I am gonna remove the 7k. Deal with a PG! That is, that's, that, that is, feels good. That is, that feels pretty good. We want to use this. Do we want to use this? We could remove the PG. I guess it's fine. We'll add a grade 3 to our hand. Which is fine, we can just always re -legion. And we will remove the PG. Get that out of the way. And I will call the Fuki. So we can try to hit over those numbers. No matter what they see, that's a heal, so that's not very helpful. Okay. Draw a sugar. Okay, they're at five. They get that stride from the back, which means that they can stride, but they don't have GB active at all, which means they can't use they can't use some of the shenanigans that they do have, like the guard trick and the crit. And even then, we do have the PGs, they can't use the next stage because they are not Chronoge at heart. So they do have a little tough situation. They do have Rai Phase, which means that they do have a grade 3 in their hand. Would they rewrite? Maybe if it's a Chronoge, they would rewrite. Just so they could remove some stuff with Karen Last 1. Um, and actually activate next stage. But they are low on hand, so I don't, I don't really know. It's a hard spot to be in. Fate Rider here, I think, is just a really great option, just to get rid of the GG, put something else onto the front row, so they're not as vulnerable. A uh, resist unit would be great, just so they know that we have a Hokkeke Gongo. So, I think that definitely, just striding, you know, you don't need the Chrono Jet right now, just striding, going into the Fate Rider, spinning the GG into a... into a... Ishin, calling something out, going for lethal, asking for one defensive, and um, bracing themselves, I think that is definitely the play I would go for. But if they wanted to be more aggressive, I guess I guess going into Chrono Jet, striding, removing that intercept, and just trying to build the numbers would be the play to just go for game. But here we go, just gonna go for the Strive Butter, keeping the Great 3 in your hand. Going for Chrono's Command, interesting. This is definitely not what I expected. But I guess they do have the Soul for it, just to remove the Fuki. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> no, I really don't know. 
Uh, but I guess if they want to go attack Vanguard last, it doesn't really matter because the on-hit doesn't work. Just gonna, gonna call down the Chrono Jet. Maybe they don't have the Fate Rider. And I guess that's the hard part about this game right now is a lot of the good pieces are GRs. So lots of new players or old players alike are just, you just don't have all the good options available for you unless you, you grind or invest really money or a lot of time, uh, which I, I do the latter. So it is, it is a tough spot to be in. Uh, the game is is not very friendly, for sure. But we do with we, we play with the hand that we're dealt, and um, sometimes that's part of the enjoyment. That's some that's part of the challenge. And I hope uh, I hope uh, my fellow favorite play players can enjoy that to to as much as you can, and fellow Wills can appreciate that. Um, they have access to more units than, than some other players and definitely gives them a more exciting playing experience. So we see the draw trigger, the Ishin, but we're gonna PG that. And the question is, do we stride or do we do we rewrite the Legion or what do we do? I definitely think that the the stride play isn't that amazing. I think the Legion play could be good. Just to remove something. Because the Legion doesn't say your opponent must have three courts or more. The weakness of the Legion play is that I will not have a rear guard to hit over that 9k. So that is going to be a rough one. Going into the Mandu is also a play that I can contemplate. Striding means I can draw one extra card from the deck. And we do have a lot of great twos in our, in our deck that are valuable. So maybe the stride play is the better play. Let's just go stride. We can always pick up that unit back and uh, go for the Legion next turn if we want. But our hand is kind of dead right now. There's not a lot of plays we can do with it. So, unfortunately, not a great, not a great two, but that's okay. We're just gonna call stuff up, try to attack and go for game. No three cards. If if they did, I would Fuki here, for sure. Eleven to eleven. That is a PG. So no heal guards. And let's go for game. Let's go for game. If we fail here, it would be a little bit sad. But. That is game, do Lord and Savior, here we go, helping us get the numbers that we need to go for lethal, and that is game. That's nice, clean and simple, there we go. So, it was a little bit of a mud fight, um, not the most ideal for both players, but, you know, I guess that's that's how the nin ninjas work, right? We, we try to sabotage your opponent, we try to bind them down, and make them suffer. Fortunately, we did suffer ourselves as well, but we did make it happen. And uh, top deck rate three, we did some legion plays, we did some stride plays, and it was pretty good. So hopefully, we can go into game two. Angel feathers, this one could be a good one. Angel feathers, they generally have a healthy hand, so more bind options. We can use more of our stuff. Uh, again, I don't really want to see this. Uh, stride fodder is fine. PG is fine. All right, let's not get great second again. I hope not. But going second again, we also have that extra draw. And we have a little bit more time to draw into our pieces. We have one more offensive drop jack. So hopefully that helps us. Azriel, this is this is a great starter as well. Um, kind of like the Nausea line, where you can just replace one. But I do prefer the heal trigger, Sunny Smile Angel more. Just because it is a heal trigger, just because it goes back to the deck and you get to draw one anyway. Like you get to plus one anyways. It is also not cheaply restricted. And you can use it as soon as turn one. So I just prefer that. But this this is also really neat because it does help you. It does help you set up your damage zone better, and provide you a little bit more tutoring, even though it is it is a bit random, given that it's top of the deck. But all right, we're gonna ride the Dreadmaster. Not too important to me. I'm gonna call down the Fuki. And we're gonna a little poke for a 7 and poke for a 12. A little ghostly. One thing to be. Uh, I was about to say one thing to be careful of is that the Pegasus does get extra power. But then I already did the stuff. But luckily we did sack, so that's fine. It worked out. And we did see the Great 3 for the first time, so that is nice. Stand Trigger, Refros. Very OP card uh, in the TCG. Unfortunately here they did soft nerf it in the sense that this ability can only activate once per turn even if there are other cards with the same card name. In the TCG you can use this as many times as possible until they 
restricted it to one for, for quite a while. I'm not sure if it is still restricted to one right now, but it is a trigger that goes back to your deck, helps you draw and um, do do all the stuff that angels do want. So, and back then, you know, your Pegasus would scale up immensely. You check these stands and then um, your opponent understands that it's time for them to die. So there's that. All right, we're just gonna ride this, 9k. We don't have the Tamahagani combo, but that's okay. So we're gonna pull back a little bit. And we're just going to battle. Play a little slower. You can always double Fuki into the starter as well, but I don't know if that's necessary right now. I think I'd rather keep my board, my pieces, and Fuki when the time is right. Later down into the game, when our opponent's resources is a bit lower, more burnt out, so then we can um, we can really strangle them of resources and go for game. Going into Gavrail, which is a very, very cute stand trigger. This is also something that we saw in the championships where generally you play eight of the legions plus one of the Gavrail or the Refros as a stand trigger. Of course you have your nine stand, uh, nine draw variants as well, but generally more than one stand is rare, but uh, it could be interesting in how it plays out. They have the 19k number because the new grade threes all have the on place plus 4k. The main the main grade threes all have that skill, which is, which is helpful. We'll ride the Kurijiri Kongo, which has the ride animation. Haven't seen those in a long time. Well, for one, because I do turn them off. I want to go through more games faster, and because, well, most... <laughs> I don't have most of the new skins, so that is just sad. Uh, using the Jororuken here is pretty good, honestly. Our opponent has cards, three cards, one of three cards in their hand. They have stuff on the board that I want to remove. Solid. Solid card. Tamahagane, that is pretty solid too. Okay, I can use this. I'll use Fuki. Dump one thing. Helps us set up our soul as well, which is helpful. Okay, I'm gonna use this. What, is, what does this number get into? 15, it doesn't have uh, numbers, so let's get rid of this. Battle, 9. 15 and 31. I'm gonna use the skill, dump the mate. I'm gonna remove one card from their board and their hand. That's another, another Ruffles. This is, this is a pure Gavrail build, I guess. Heal. Very nice. And we're gonna use the Kuroko to remove. The two units from the Fuki and the Tamahagami. So look at that. We're shutting our opponent down. They play a really greedy nine stand build, probably, since we didn't see any draws yet. And you can see them being punished for that. Punished very, very hard for that. We're just removing all their pieces, binding them, and locking them out of the game. And it feels oh so good because Angels is meta. And I'm so sorry if Jazz is watching this because. That, yeah, that's probably a game. What can they do? We have like multiple PGs. They don't know that, but we uh, we have a incredible amount of advantage over them, and it's it's struggle street. So that's basically game. This match definitely went smoother than expected. Generally, again, Nubatama is a more fun deck than a meta deck, so don't put too much expectations to it. But as you can see, even though you don't really draw into your well, you don't draw as much as other decks when the pieces align and when you can piece them all together the effects can be devastating against people that well against decks that don't draw at all because this is a hand destruction value a card advantage destruction deck and um can put your opponent in bind so that's basically it again thank you so much for watching like the video if you liked it subscribe if you haven't already and want to see more thank you to the members again camoe no grappler two mellow zbd and casey for supporting the channel and if you're interested of course comment down below what you think about the fighters collection overall i think we're pretty much near the end of covering fighters collection decks there are still some but i've been trying cecilia's i've been trying some ground blue stuff and it's just not really working for me uh, but i will try keep experimenting with them but i do need to focus more on practicing the decks that I'm comfortable with already and bringing them into the Winter Circuit Finals, which is in a week or two. So that's basically me for today. Again, let me know down below what your thoughts on Fighters Collection are overall. 
Um, do you want more Finders Collection? How do you feel about the support overall? Like, is it balanced? Do you feel like some decks got better than others? Do you think it's a good thing? Do you think it's a bad thing? Um, with or without the free box? Let me know down below. I'm really interested in hearing what you think. Overall, even if they don't give us the free packs, I think it's a positive because all clans got support at the same time. And that means a lot, you know? Even if it's even if you get support, if you if you're playing clans that get support all the time, it still means that you get a little bit more spice to your life. If you're playing clans that don't get support all the time, it means that you finally got something new to play with, and that is quite exciting for me, who has a little bit of everything, who wants to try a little bit of everything, just not because I am good at everything, but because I want to know the the, the thought process and the way things play, so I can like try to try to play around them or I could do more content with you as well um, I think it's great I think it's great it means I, I have an easier time making more content and just having fun so that is me for now hope you have a great day great week ahead of you and I will see you soon bye hey yo how's it going everyone entropy here today with another video today we're gonna be